Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have uh, three Spanish wines in front of me, um, or to the side of me. Uh, two of them are Rioja, one of them is from Toro. Uh, and Toro usually lives up to its big bullish name. Uh, so I'm going to leave that one to last and do the Riocas first. Uh, so the first one is, uh, the, well the first two are both on Vigna Real. The uh, first one is a 2010 Reserva. Let's give it that a whirl. It smells rich and knowing. Uh, it doesn't smell amazingly uh, fresh and fruity. It's five years old already, uh, but it feels like it's got around a bit and has some tales to tell. Um, there's a freshness still about the uh, the fruit, uh, but it's got a few uh, battle scars, and uh, so there's a meatiness about it. And yes, there's a warm berry, a little bit of uh, orange peel in there, and uh, it feels like it's going to be, yeah. Pirate wine. Oh, what's, what's great about that is it's got a rich edge, uh, but it's got a fresh edge. Uh, that, that's what I notice in, in uh, a lot of the best Riochas. They, they have uh, this juiciness of fruit. Uh, and oh, the, the weird thing is, you think it's a red wine, so it's going to have those classic berries, plums, cherries flavour. Uh, but uh, I often get as much this citrus fruit character coming through. Uh, so quite a strong orangey element here in with the, uh, the red berry and plum. Um, and but in, it's more the the way in which the uh, the, the character that's developed in its ageing that's uh, that, that's showing really really well, well now. It still feels young. It still feels quite tight. So it's got some uncurling to do. Uh, there's this debate in Rock Rock at the moment uh, that uh, people should be moving more to put uh, to putting the accent on the vineyard rather than uh, how the wine has been aged. Uh, and I, I, I think that's a, that's a, a great move. Yes, there will undoubtedly be a difference between how wines show on different sites. But I hope in the process they don't lose the art of élevage, which is something that uh, uh, they do extremely well with their, uh, with their traditional style of red wine. And here it's it's just what it should be. Uh, yeah, feisty, knowing wine. Mmm, really like that. Next one is the 2009 Grand Reserva. Um, what the difference, uh, you may know, you may not. Uh, a, a reserva can't be sold until it's uh, three years old plus a few months to take you to the following January. And of those three years, at least one has to have been in barrel. Grand Reserva, um, similar-ish, uh, but it's got to be five and a bit years old. And of those five years, at least two have to have been in barrel. Uh, so let's give this 2009 Grand Reserva a whirl. And that's less immediate fruit uh, but more of those slightly savoury, uh, woody characters uh, that, that uh, the extra time in, in, um, in barrel and the extra age of the wine have given it. Again, that lovely freshness that's there. Uh, the fruit is um, warm uh, but gentle. And this, I often talk about the um, sandy, dust, sorry, the dusty warmth of Spain coming through. You know that that smell of uh, hot roof tiles. I, I, I get that in quite a lot of Spanish wine, wines and Rioja is, um, and, and, yeah, I, I, I get it there. I get it in that one. More, more probably than in the, uh, uh, in the Reserva. But it's fresh. I mean, the, the, it's, it, it's a, it, it manages to be full bodied, but fresh. 13.5% uh, alcohol, so not, not nothing daft. They're both 13.5, uh, but um, very tasty. Um, and as with the first one, uh, this feels like a wine that's still got a bit of time to, to reach its peak, but it's looking pretty good now. Final wine. Uh, so we're in Toro now. Um, the main grape of these first two will be, will be Tempranillo, uh, and it's the same with this one. Uh, which, but I think this one has to be 100% Tempranillo, or Tinta de Toro, as it's known here. Uh, so this is the outpost of, um, uh, well, Mose and Chandon. Uh, and uh, they've, I don't know how long they've had a, a place in Toro. It's probably... I don't think it'll be 15 years, maybe 10 years. Uh, and anyway, let's give this one a whirl. We'll have a look at the alcohol first. 15%, um, so quite a high cut. I was correct to leave this one till last. Well, I mean, I stick my nose in there and it smells big, rich, ripe, juicy, plummy. Uh, not as fresh as the previous two, uh, but uh, throatier. And which for some will be a positive and for some will be a, a, a negative. It's just that Toro is a, a, a much warmer region than, than Rioja. And this is, um, this is the style of wines that the vineyards um, seem to uh, uh, deliver and which the winemakers want to make. Warm, juicy, hearty, plummy and uh, tannic, lots and lots of tannin there, uh, both from uh, oak 
and uh, from grapes. And there's this edge of licorice, which for me always speaks of, uh, of high alcohol in, in wines. It is a big beast of a wine. Um, it's not a style I'm a huge fan of, I have to say. It's, um, it, is, it seems to be one of those that is trying to uh, impress rather than caress. And you know what, I've got to an age where I'd rather be caressed than impressed. Um, and those tannins, what I'm left with, it just feels like the, the fruit uh, lacks the freshness to, um, to, make warrant, uh, to make me warrant, want to age it. I think as the, the tannins will soften, but by that time, the fruit will be almost too soft. And um, I know a lot of people who will, who will absolutely adore that. Uh, for me, it is just, it's what I call top heavy. Um, it's a heavy bottle, and I think it's got a heavy price. I think it's about 40 quid, um, but it doesn't do it for me. Hey, Achman, see you soon.